So, what's up, friends? You probably didn't know this, <clears throat> but it is... It's, it's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. Tuesday? Woo! Tuesday. I have to look at my watch. It tells me everything. So, it's, not, it's, it's 9 o'clock, Tuesday night. I came up to this job. I'll go into some more details of kind of what happened, but I just had a little, boop, little light bulb. <laughs> Get it? Light bulb right here. So, a little light bulb went off my head, and I thought, I'm going to share this with you. This is a good tip. Uh, for my installers or people, what's this notification stuff? Come on, I should turn on airplane mode. Turn your phone on airplane mode. It won't, you won't get distractions. I learned that from another YouTube video, another YouTuber, right? So, anyways, what we're gonna hear is always, always spray your spring, right? If there's not a line already on there, take some spray paint, make a line. Springs, the spring's dead right now, so there's no lines on it. Reason being, I've had people try to convince me of this otherwise. And they tell me, they go, no, you don't need to. You just count the tearings, blah, blah, But there is something that's very beneficial. Look, look, at, I'm way up in the sky right now on a scissor lift, right? When you're down at the ground, you can visually, you can visually look up and you can see how many turns are on the springs. So let's say a spring would let loose. You can go back there without even getting a ladder and go, uh oh, that spring came loose, right? But if you don't ever paint them and they're just solid black, you can't tell the spring's dead. Um, it's very hard to do from the ground. If you can, great. I'm proud of you, but I can't. So I always spray paint my springs for one. That way when I start balancing the door out, I can already look from the ground and go that one over there. The left one has a little more spring tension than maybe the right one or vice versa. So just a helpful little tip, tip always spray your springs with oil. Or I'm sorry, with, with, with paint, then spray them with oil. So I spray everything. I spray everything now. It's a brand new door. Because the last thing I want right now <clears throat> is this was not the best setup that I've ever done in my life. There's metal behind here. So I had to use these long screws to go through wood and metal. And I just I just anchored the crap out of it. I said, you know, I said, I'm not going to have this. So it's, it's nice and solid. Um, but uh, the reason what I'm getting at is why you oil it. It's because it'll keep the door springs, the garage door springs here, from going, doing that chunk, chunk, chunk. And when that does that, it's just like an impact, an impact gun going, ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, really fast. So it can, it can cause um, premature wear on things. So I'm going to oil the door down, but I'm going to wind it and uh, I'm going to try to get this door set up and get everything uh, up and rolling. And then we'll go through a little story about what kind of happened up here and the funds and the joys. Yeah. Okay. So. Here we are. Uh, I don't know, it's about 10 o'clock now? Something like that. So anyways, um, how are you guys doing? Everybody doing good? I hope everybody's doing good. So, just finished up this door. This door behind me here. Just got done. Beautiful. Got the springs just right. Got the side lock on. Got the rope on. It's going to get an opener, but not tonight. So, I don't know if you guys do a lot of commercial operator or, or commercial jobs. Let's just say that. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, we're going to go to this one here. So, this one I originally installed back here. And, yeah, I had to take the door back down. That was fun. Um, I get it. It, it. it is what it is. I'm not um, disputing with uh, the builder on it, but it's not really what I want. So he wants us to put, you know, like residential seal over this wood, you know, when the door comes in here and then we got to go through this wood. So we got to drill through the wood into the metal. Wasn't really what I was expecting to do. You know what I mean? We have reverse angle. Um, let me just show you in case you don't know. So this is the right way to do it, in my opinion. Um, when you're doing garage doors in commercial, um, there's a couple reasons, but the wood, I get it, they don't want to go around our stuff and they're worried about it. They're worried about when the door goes up, it's going to hit the wood on the jam, which is totally understandable. A lot of times builders will put some flat stock metal up there, but whatever, it is what it is. So anyways, if you take a look here, this is what we call jam mount seal or clip mount seal. And it, it just, it, all it does is, let's get you a little closer here. It just clips right to the track on, the, on this. So this is just reversed. So instead of having your brackets out here, that would kick this way like on a wood you know residential if you got a house your house one probably has a flag brackets that come out this one just clips onto the 
track here, right? And what I like about that is that way, if a forklift or anything comes through here, buzzing through here, it hits this, it doesn't break off the weather seal. So the other door's back in this other room, which is just pitch black. Can't see them. Um, those have them on here. But these three doors, so we got one, two, this one's going to be tight. This one's going to be tight. Um, especially, what I feel like I should have put a little more high lift in it just to get it to roll back and fit in that door or that jam or in that room. But anyways, they're going to put a conveyor in there. It's craziness. I keep asking people ask me, what are they going to do? I don't understand this. And I'm like, they're doing a conveyor. I don't know. We'll see it when it's done one day. Then this one was a little curveball. So that piece has got to go. That piece right there has got to go. That's right in my, that's up in my zone, man. So I got to mark that with some tape before I leave. Um, Otherwise, this job's going uh, spectacular. It's great. Um, lighting here is wonderful. Actually, tonight's a good night. It's not real super cold like it was last night, uh, especially if being for, what is it, mid-October, roughly. So I'll show you a couple other little tricks. Um, this door I went through. It was a little grindy for some reason. Track was loose. I got everything right, but I sprayed everything. I sprayed the tracking a little bit. I really, if you guys don't use... If I ever find something that's uh, close to this, I might try something different. But this Ultra from Service Spring, this Ultra Gel, I really like this stuff. I like it for new installs. And the reason being is that when you do new installs, it doesn't leave a nasty residue. It's just like like WD-40, but on steroids. It just, um, it's a little more goopy, like snot. And I like that. It sticks, and it doesn't leave a nasty residue. Um, like the other stuff does that we do that's multi-purpose through service spring that's more for gate operators and stuff like that or commercial doors that are old and dirty who cares but new installs you don't see the residue so I like that stuff um, so always 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 up there's the bump stops stops the doors don't ever leave don't ever leave one of my jobs or let me catch you ever leave a job without bump stops I swear I will beat the snot out of you I'm not joking that's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's it's hazardous for the door. Somebody can get hurt. So what I do is I always make it a few inches. You know, this is probably about four or six inches above the header. The reason being is that when somebody cranks that door and they go, oh, the door came down. It must have been down a little bit. I can go, dude, you took a forklift or a pallet too big through here. I can see you smash the header, then the door. So always make sure your door is above the header when you're in these situations. Um, it'll just, it'll save you a lot of grief or down the road. Um, cause it could be in two weeks and the builder could do it too. And I can go, uh, dude, the header is blown out first. And then the door is compromised. You didn't hit the door. The door didn't drift down or something goofy. Cause that's what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you the door drifted down, the opener malfunction. They're going to tell you all these things. So anyways, I got to wrap it up here. Um, there's pretty much this all I can do because until they get their sheeting up, um, on the walls here and they already built me a couple, uh, now you can't really see them, but they cut right here's one. They built me a spring pad right here and an operator pad right here. That one's going to be in the cavity. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, anyways, good job. Good job. It's looking good. Um, I'm proud of it. It's uh, it's going really good. You know, always put some wicked uh, kickers. Put some wicked kickers on those, those big doors, man. They get wind. They get all kinds of weird stuff. Forklifts. Uh animals critters birds i mean you gotta always look for the future don't look at just trying to get the job done and get out of there as quick as you can try to be an excellent craftsman try to look at it like you don't want to ever come back um i always look at my work like i'm trying to I'm trying to be that guy that built a bridge or the guy that was a uh, built those old houses at the with just the sculptures that you know you knew he took a lot of pride and stuff and it lasted a long time you know what i mean so i always try to do that in my work make sure it's gonna last a long time Make sure I did the best job I could, because especially when they're far away. This one's a little bit far away from home, so got to make sure it looks good. So, anyways, we'll uh, show a couple more tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. And we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, let's go check this out. So, this has been my... Um, this is what's happened in my uh, experiences over the years. Is I've had these keyways work their ways out and fall out. Um, in a matter of years or time, but these always, when I come across these nine times out of 10, these set screws for the center coupler are loose. 
I mean, even when they got these, uh, they, they kind of upgraded them now to these 916 locking nuts on here. So, best thing you can do, a little piece of insurance. Get yourself some split collars, or solid collars if you're smart enough to put them on beforehand. I'm not. I always use the split collars because sometimes um, I just worked on a door um, in the other room that it was so tight, these bearing plates where the, the steel landed, I don't know what the configuration, there was no way the keys were going to work, work their way out. So, um, just a helpful little tip if uh, maybe you never thought about it, maybe you've seen it, uh, maybe you're getting into the commercial, um, put some, uh, put these on here, it'll save you a lot down the road. I mean, it's a few bucks, but, uh, you know, like I said, service call cost uh, a lot more, you know, callbacks cost greenbacks. The outside ones, for some reason, I hardly ever see those ones come out. I'm not saying it's impossible. I've never seen it, but I think it's more they're locked in, the torque. What I see with these, my opinion is, and I got it down pretty good to a science. When I match these up, what I'm always looking for is I look for the, the gap on this. So if I have a, a, a gap at the top, I know that this coupler is sitting on an angle, and this, you know, these things are up, uh, these brackets are up too high. So I always get my coupler lined up really well um, because I think what happens is if, if these are both on a, a different pitch, what happens is this coupler, when it's rotating, is wobbling all the time, in which in turn works these keys out. But regardless, even if you got it perfect, um, it's not even my installs or whatnot. I've seen people, mine included, have uh, I've seen these work out. So I always just put these on for a little extra insurance. Might buy you a, a, a long time. Um, you know, sometimes I see these come so these uh, couplers. It'll start hogging these out in here just from it rattling back and forth. So hopefully it's a helpful little tip for you guys. Um, yeah, so we're going to wrap her up and get out of here. Well, I hope you guys learned something today, and thanks for watching. You know, you should subscribe to my channel, maybe like, share, if you think any of this content's useful. Maybe it can help your technicians, maybe it can help somebody else out in the field. So anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for watching, like it always. And yeah, it's 10.30. Time to go home. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.